In this final activity, students will be designing and building their solar ovens. It's important to first review the science concepts we've learned in previous activities so that students can utilize these concepts when tackling this engineering design challenge. From the first activity, the students learned that dark colored objects absorb more solar radiation than light colored objects. They will need to use this information to absorb heat in their solar ovens. From the second activity, they learned how to find the sun in the sky. They will need to use this information to position their solar ovens outside. From the third activity, they learned what types of materials are good insulators, and they can use this information to help their solar ovens retain heat. Ask each student to bring in a, a cardboard box for this activity. This could be a shoe box or a corrugated shipping box uh, or something like that. The students will work in groups of two or three, and so each group will have two or three boxes to choose from to create their solar oven. Uh, and each solar oven will utilize two of those boxes. Alternatively, you could bring in a box, uh, boxes for the students themselves. Uh, these could come from a recycling bin or something like that. This is another open-ended engineering design challenge, and so it's very important to provide a way for the students to come up with their own solutions to the problems. Let them think through this activity based on the challenge that is given to them. The challenge is, use what you have learned and the materials provided to build a solar oven that can attain as high a temperature as possible. The specifications and constraints are on the student handouts along with some design strategies. It is easy to cut cereal boxes and thin cardboard with craft scissors, but corrugated cardboard might require more heavy-duty scissors. Also, glue is not included in the kits, but tape may be substituted for all parts of the construction. Don't skimp on the tape. The more airtight the design, the better your oven will work. Now I'm going to build the top of the solar oven. The purpose of the top of the oven is to let solar radiation into the oven while still being able to open the oven and to put food in. We want the seal between the top and the rest of the oven to be as airtight as possible. The purpose of reflectors is to take solar radiation that would otherwise not have hit your oven and reflect it through the clear plastic window. To test my different designs, I took my ovens out on a sunny day to see how they would perform. The ones that were very airtight achieved the highest interior temperature. 
For the purposes of this video, I use the digital multimeter. It is not included in the kit, but it works just like a thermometer, only easier to read. I also took my solar ovens outside on a partly cloudy day. The outside temperature was still about 97 degrees, but the ovens did not get quite as hot inside. At the end of the activity, ask each group to describe how their solar oven works and how it can be improved. They should identify which parts of their design aided in heating the oven and which parts of their design kept the heat inside. In the end, it's important to test the solar ovens with food if you have time. This can be done on a different day or even while another activity is going on. For food, we often use pre-made cookie dough because it's okay, uh, it's good to eat even if it doesn't cook all the way through, which sometimes happens with some of the students' ovens if they're not built very well. Um, this is safe to eat no matter what. Other options would be something flat like a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, finally, if you want to see other ways of, of cooking in the sun, check out the Solar Cooking Archive at solarcooking.org. This has many other ideas for cooking using a solar oven.